So you just ran your session and it just didn't hit the mark. You tried your best, but things just didn't really work. If you're wondering if you're a bad dungeon master, maybe even starting to contemplate if you should keep running games or just throw in the towel. This is a common thing. And that's not to downplay it, not in the least bit. Look y'all, my name is Sensei Suplex and I'm a professional DM who literally gets paid to run D&D games. I've appeared on different D&D shows and literally run a business where I have to interact with nearly a hundred people on the daily regarding running their D&D games. And I've dealt with this exact stuff before. It happens to us all. I still remember to this day the session where I panicked and ended a session two hours early because I wasn't prepared or I was taken by surprise. Or the time when I first started DMing where my players went so far off the rails and they were about to sail to another city entirely where I literally had God himself come down and tell them, you're an idiot, the quest is that way, and what are you guys doing? Or the time where my big bad who I thought was all cool more so just came off as unfun to deal with and annoying rather than a badass threat people want to challenge. The point is no one is immune to having a bad session. You're not alone. You may feel down but this isn't the end and I'll tell you what if you clicked on this video the chances are you want to improve so you're ahead of the pack already. So let's see it through to improve our games for the sake of our players and for the sake of the game. However, bad in regards to a bad session is subjective. A lot of people like to tell you what you should do or must do for your D&D game. And I can't tell you that as I'm not sitting at your table and I'm not you. However, I'm going to explain what I would do if I ran a bad session. And hopefully this will at least give you a shift in perspective to help you out in the future. So I'm gonna break this down into three parts. And the first thing I would do is RRR. And it's definitely not based on the amazing Tollywood movie, I swear or what's RRR? Reframe, relearn, and remember. So for reframe, well, let's put this in perspective. I come from a background in high school wrestling and martial arts, hence the name Sensei Suplex. Both my coaches, my instructor, and my stepdad told me after a match, there are three outcomes. You can win, you can learn, or you can lose. Winning is straightforward, but when hit with a defeat, you can choose to do nothing and run it back, doing absolutely nothing different in hopes of changing things or something. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Fun fact, that's the definition of insanity. And you'll probably lose your mental in the process. Or you can learn. A wise man once said, intelligence is the rate of learning. So if I hold up a red card and I slap you, but then I wait a couple of seconds, and then I show you the red card again, and I slap you again, you've not learned. If I show it to you a third time, but this time you dodge, you have learned. Same condition, different behavior. But enough with the philosophy. How do I apply this in D&D? Well, I review everything that happened in the game. I identify the portions of the game that I felt were off or bad and then I mark them down. However, when I mark them down, I put down why. I put down why I thought they were bad. This is very important, especially for when I get feedback as I may think something was bad for one reason, but the players actually think it was bad for another reason, or they think it wasn't bad at all. They actually thought it was good. For number two, relearn. Now we put it into action. We need to ensure that we actually fix the stuff that we say. So for example, if I wrote down, I felt as if the scene with the bartender felt a little drawn out and we think the reason was because I kept giving them more and more world building and lore, then we think the solution may actually be, instead of having an NPC give the lore dump, the players may find out about the lore of the world in a dungeon written on the walls, or just by you describing the surrounding scenes as you show but don't tell. Or maybe you felt as if the tavern was a little boring, and you think the reason why is because there wasn't much to do. The solution you may come up with would be to add more interactable things in the tavern or more interesting NPCs to talk to, or to give players some something worth talking about in said tavern to drive inter-party discussion. But we can only come up with those solutions if we can at least identify what the problems were. We can also use these to adapt to situations where they come up again. Remember the red card? The third part is remember. Now it's time to remember that though we have all these things listed down, we have to remember the point of why we're playing the game in the first place. Is it to be the best dungeon master in your country or in the world? Is it to be a masterful storyteller so people can buy your setting book? Or is it to be considered super cool because you do these crazy voices and have crazy effects in your games. No, it's none of those things. We play D&D simply to have fun. We play D&D to ensure that all of our players are able to just for three to four hours escape from their jobs, their IRL responsibilities, trauma, or frustrations in life to have them pretend that they're an elf with their friends causing chaos and shenanigans. Our job is to facilitate fun and have fun doing it. That's it. 
So when you're in a bad session, you may see a bunch of things listed. And remember, no one's asking you to be perfect. They just want you to be honest and they want everyone to have fun. That's it. Part two, ask for feedback if possible, anonymously if you can, and reward people for doing it. So you can't improve without feedback and we gave ourselves feedback, but that's only one fifth of the table or possibly even smaller if you have five or six players. So we need to ask for feedback, but how? So in Project Aurora, I talk to dozens of DMs all the time and what I've noticed over the years is that us dungeon masters are probably our own biggest critics. We spend so much time on our work, we pick apart everything that what's wrong with it because we know what's behind the curtain. However, players don't know. They only know what they see and they most likely assume and guess the rest. It's human nature, given the situation. But because they don't know, nine times out of 10, they won't have any feedback for your game. Nine times out of 10, when I've asked for feedback, the conversation or the post that I get is, nah, I love it, or I can't really think of anything. And this is the most common one, they don't write anything, comma, and that's okay. So when I tell you what I do next and you try to replicate it, don't be confused when you check and there are no feedback submissions. All right, so I make a Google form and then I do this one of two ways. I can either keep it vague to get more overall feedback and ask questions like, what was one thing that you enjoyed that you want to see more of? Or what's one thing that you didn't enjoy that you want to see less of? And I ask for one specific thing, not multiple, but why? Because most of the time, D&D players can't think of more than one thing, and if you ask them to, hey, just give me feedback, they may have so many things to say, but not sure how to really say it or where to begin. Or they just don't say anything because they can barely think of one. And on top of that, when you ask for one thing, it forces them to pick the most important thing. And on top of that, for the really passionate people, they'll put more than one thing anyways, as they just wanna help you out. The other more specific way I ask for feedback is, I take the list from earlier and I may ask a targeted question. So I may say, did you feel as if the barkeep scene was a little too long last session? Or did you feel as if the tavern area was kind of boring? This way I can get direct feedback from them for the stuff I directly want to change and then learn whether it was a problem or not in the shorter amount of time. Though I may gain more actionable feedback here, I may not learn of any other issues I wasn't aware of to begin with. Lastly, I don't ask more than five questions. We're not giving them a closed note test. We just want them to help you out by telling us how to make the game better. People have lives, so don't ask them more than five. And if I can, ask them less than five questions and get the feedback you want, I do it. Less can be more in this case as more people are likely to fill it out compared to you asking 10 questions and maybe one person filling it out. Two small extra bonus tips here. I know I said I was gonna go through three, but I just wanna add two for you. Number one, if you don't think players will fill out the submission form, when handing out the form, just say this. Hey, if you guys fill it out, I'll give you guys an inspiration point as you're helping improve the game and it really means a lot to me. Tip number two is lastly, thank them for the feedback expressively. For example, here's what I try my best to do when someone gives me feedback. I'll say, dude, thank you so much. Holy crap. You have no idea how much this means to me. I'm really just trying to figure out this whole thing and this helps out a ton. Thank you so much. And also, I genuinely mean it when I say it. It shows the players that, hey, you're human and you actually care. Also, if you guys can do me a favor, if you like this video, please leave a like as other DMs may have just had a bad session. Maybe they need to see this video so they don't feel hopeless or lost. Thank you guys. Number three, I ask each player what they want out of the D&D session, then emphasize it in the next session. Outside of the feedback forms, a lot of the time we just try to assume what players like, and I'm extremely guilty of this especially in the Soulbound campaign. Like, I would always be like, oh yeah, I set up the combat this way because I didn't think you guys would have fun if it was this way. Or here's a big one. Yeah, I added more content and stuff to do in the session because I thought you weren't going to have fun or you'd get bored just RPing in the cave. And this sucked for my players. So here's what I did to help with this. Drum roll, please. I just asked them what they want out of D&D. Wow, shocker, I know. But people don't do this and I was one of them. So to prove this, when was the last time your DM asked you what you want out of a D&D session outside of them asking in your session zero? Probably not much. So we simply ask them in a friendly message and say something along the lines of, hey Tim, hope you're doing okay. Just wanted to reach out as I'm trying to make this game the best it can possibly be. And I want to ask you, 
what's your favorite thing about D&D? Or like, what's the thing that you enjoy the most in a D&D session? This will give me tons of direction to make the game better. Thanks, Tim. And I may not copy and paste the exact same thing. I'll recontextualize it, of course, but the principle still remains. However, in D&D, you want to stand out, and there's no better place to stand out than in the giant living universe D&D MMORPG Project Aurora. That's the thing that I run, where it's legit an MMORPG, where there are over a dozen dungeon masters, dozens of players, where they all affect an entire universe and each other's campaigns in real time with raid bosses, RP knights, crossovers, cameos, you name it. If you want to play D&D with me or any of those DMs, join the Discord, apply to be a player, and I'll see you in there. Or just ask in the comments. But thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Peace.